Hello everyone! Two weeks ago I did a video on Kill Jaden and in that video I talked a little bit about Envina. Some of you wanted to know more about Envina's story so I'm going to do my very best to tell it. Unfortunately most of it is in the comics. It also changes a couple events in the lore, it's not entirely told. But let's just begin and see how far we can go, shall we? It all begins with Arthas and Kelfuzad. Arthas was turned into a death knight by Ner'zhul and he was told to resurrect Kelfuzad into a lich. To resurrect him he would need a great source of power since resurrecting in the lore isn't as easy as they showed in the game. This meant that Arthas would need to breach the defenses of Quel'Thalas and use the power of the Sunwell to bring back Kelfuzad. The Sunwell was created by the High Elves with water taken from the original Well of Eternity. This gave the High Elves incredible powers which they used to build their city of Quel'Thalas, shape the land around it and defend the city. They held their ground during the troll wars. They were able to cloak themselves from the burning legion. They even stood against the orcs who attacked them with red dragons. This meant that taking the city was no easy task. In Warcraft 3 they showed us that Arthas took the city just with his mighty scourge army. In the novel Arthas Rise of the Lich King they told us that Arthas had a man on the inside and in this comic they go into greater details. A high elf called Darkandrafir was a very powerful mage. He had helped with creating the city and shaping the land, but for all his hard work, he felt like he didn't get the credit or power that he deserved. When Arthas reached out to him and promised him the powers of the Sunwell, he was more than willing to sell out his own people. He befriended Lord from Arfaron to get him more information about the defenses, and he pretty much opened the gates for Arthas to take the city. Arthas then used the Sunwell to resurrect Kelfuzad, and this action could corrupted the well. Citizens of Silvermoon, I have given you ample opportunities to surrender, but you have stubbornly refused. Know that today, your entire race and your ancient heritage will end. Death itself has come to claim the high home of the elves. Now arise, Kel'Thuzad, and serve the Lich King once again. I am reborn as promised. The Lich King has granted me eternal life. Now somewhere along the way, Darkon tried to betray Arthas himself. And this is of course a huge mistake. Arthas took his life, just like he had taken the life of Sylvanas, and he turned Darkon into a Scourge. Even after betraying him and turning him into a Scourge, Arthas still allowed Darkon to tap powers from the Sunwell, and he might have succeeded was it not for Kilfas Sunstrider and his troops. Kilfas was not a quell for lust during the Scourge attack, and he had found out that the well was corrupted. To prevent this corruption from spreading to his people, he decided to blow up the well. This action prevented Darkon from claiming its power, but it didn't destroy all of the Sunwell. Some of its powers were still out there, and the red dragon Coriolstras realized that people would come looking for it. Scourge, dragons, anyone with a taste of power would want the remaining essence of the Sunwell, so he decided to hide it away. He collected the powers and then transformed them into an ordinary human girl with fake memories, fake family, a fake home, and he hid her away from the world. This is the moment where the Sunwell trilogy starts and it's a pretty big story so I'll have to keep it on a need to know basis. All this manipulation of magic drew the attention of the blue dragonflight, just like Coriolstras had predicted. The blue dragon aspect Melagos gave Kelagos the task of finding out what was going on and finding this source of power. Darkon was no fool and he realized that the power of the Sunwell was still out there somewhere and that this power would draw the dragons like a moth to a flame. To keep the dragons out of his way, he manipulated a dwarf called Harkin Grimstone to hunt dragons for him. Harkin had lost his family in a black dragon attack, so to him, all dragons, no matter what color, were pure evil. This group of dragon hunters, they saw Kalik flying through the sky as he was looking for the power, and they used the net to shoot him down. Before they reached him, Kalik was found by a human girl named Envina. She recognized him for what he was, a dragon, and despite Kalik's protest, she took him with her to her house and her family. Most humans at the time, they either hated or feared dragon, but Envina and her family were different. They offered their home and food and rest to Kalik, but the dragon hunters, they were not done with him yet. They were still hunting him, so when they heard sounds outside, Envina led Kalik into a secret escape tunnel. When they reached the other side, when they reached the surface, one of the dragon hunters was waiting for them, and they walked right into his arms. Kalik 
was still very weak, but he had enough magic to break them free from the dragon hunter's grip. He then transformed into his mighty dragon form, he picked up Anvina and he tried to escape. Harkin saw all of this, he took aim and he shot Kaelic out of the sky once more. This time they crashed into a lake of water, but this didn't kill them. And Vina found Kaelic washed up on shore and she watched over him while he took some well-deserved rest. When they made their way back to the house, they could see the smoke from a distance. In tears, Envina ran to her house to find her parents, but her house was completely burned down. Darkhan and his skirt minions had found them, and he placed magical chains around their necks. This chain prevented Kaelic from transforming into a dragon, but thankfully his future mate Tiragosa, she showed up and she forced Darkhan to flee. Tiragosa was not sent by Melagos, but she had a feeling that Kaelic would need her help which he apparently did. And Vina then checked the ruins of her former house for any sign of her parents. She couldn't find a trace of them, but what she did find was a single egg which hatched in her hands. The group didn't know about this, but this egg was a backup plan of Coriolstras. He had to keep an eye on Envina, and this egg was left behind in case anything happened to her fake parents. The little dragon would stay close to Envina, and this way Coriolstras would be able to follow her every move. The magical chains around their neck was a problem and they would have to be removed. Kayla could just ask his lord Melagos to do this for him, but he knew that humans weren't allowed within their realm and he couldn't just leave Envina behind. She had been very kind to him and now she had lost her home and family, so he asked her about her parents and her past. She didn't know much, but she did know about a person called Borol who might be able to help her. With nothing but a name, they decided to fly to Tora Mill and look for this mysterious Borol. When they reached the town, they took up residence within the inn as they searched for Borol. The next morning, Kaelic woke up with a gun to his face, since Harkin had found them again. At the same time, the scourge led by Darkan had also found them, and Darkan revealed to Harkin that he had manipulated him. He had disguised himself as a human, and he played on the dwarf's hatred for dragons to have him do his dirty work. Dwarves don't like to be double-crossed. Harkin, he picked up his gun and he shot Darkon in the chest. This didn't do much, since Darkon is an undead, but it did buy them some time. At the same time, Yorod, a Lord of Paladin, he showed up, he freed Tiragosa from her nets, and she burned down everything, including Darkon. Yorod knew Borol, and he told them that they would probably find him near the Airy Peak. Arkin apologized for his actions, and he told them that it looked like the magical chains were made by dwarves. As luck would have it, he had a cousin who lived near the Airy Peak, and he would be able to remove their chains. This way they could kill two birds with one stone, so Yora joined them, and they traveled to the Airy Peak. Along their journey, they get attacked by a great frostworm. Tiragosa, she did her very best to keep them all in the air, but she failed and the group was split. And Vina, she was found in the snow by a tauren named Trag High Mountain, who took her to Baron Velemer Mordis. Velemer used to be a friendly baron of the land, but the scourge attacked and they resurrected him into one of their own. For a time, he joined them in their atrocities, but their disgusting actions made him so sick with himself that he regained control. He vowed to use his new powers to fight the Scourge and for this goal he wanted to use Envina. He recognized the incredible powers of the Sunwell hidden deep within her and he wanted to sacrifice her to empower an army of undead. Shrock was a longtime friend of the Baron, but his former friend was long gone. He couldn't just stand by and watch how Valimar sacrificed an innocent, so he saved Envina and reunited her with Kaelic and the others. This didn't stop the Baron though. Even from a distance, he was able to link Envina to his orb of Ner'zhul. With this link, he was able to wield her powers, and he used this to control and empower a mighty frostworm. Kaelic tried to climb the mountain and reach the Baron to stop him, but before he could, Trek was already there. He used his mighty torn strength to destroy the orb, which caused the mountain around them to crumble. The Baron wanted to escape, but Trek held him in place, and together they fell to their death. Kaelic also fell from the mountain, but Envina tapped into her powers and she saved his life. By doing so, she revealed what she actually was, and right at that moment, Darkhan showed up again. He somehow had survived Tiragosa's attack, and he now knew where the source of power was hiding from him. He captured Envina and flew away to their home, to the place where she once belonged, to quell Velas. Kaelic and the rest went after them as fast as they could. In Quelphalus, Lorfamarna's rangers, they were clearing the land of the Scourge, and one of his scouts had spotted Darkon. Lorfamar still felt guilt for trusting Darkon with information about their defenses, so he very much wanted to avenge his people by killing him. They tried to attack Darkon, 
but the massive army of Scourge around him prevented them from even reaching him. This attack did distract him long enough for Envina to escape, and when she ran away, she bumped into the one her parents called Boro, the red dragon Coriastras, who had hid her away from the world. He explained to Envina who she was and the plan that they together had come up with, but she didn't want to believe him. To his surprise, the fake memories and emotions they had taken a life of their own, they had become so real for Envina that she didn't want to believe him. The powers of the well unleashed against Coriastras, and only his incredible draconic powers saved him from obliteration. Darkon found Envina again, and he altered the spell on her chains to get her ready and absorb her powers. He also used that power to place a spell on the mind of Coriastras, and turned him against Kaelic and the rest. In the meantime, the Banshee Queen Sylvana she had come to quell for lust to take revenge upon the one who had betrayed them all. She had tried to defend her city against Arthas, but in the end she fell and Arthas resurrected her as a Banshee. In time, she too managed to regain control over her mind. She became the leader of the Forsaken and now she wanted her revenge. What she didn't count on was the red dragon Coriolstras and he took her by surprise. She tried to use her Banshee scream against him, but it didn't help her much and Darkon captured her. The scream was heard by Lorfmar and the rest of the group, so they followed the sound and they found Darkon busy absorbing Envina and her powers. They did everything they could to try and save her, but the powers of the Sunwell made Darkon almost invincible. At the end of the story, the small dragon that hatched from the egg was the one that saved them all. He was able to remove the spell placed on Coriastras, and Coriastras used this connection to show Envina what was going on. The fake memories had become so real for her that the love she felt for Kaelic was as strong as any love in the world. When she saw Kaelic lying on the ground, her love gave her the power to break free from Darkon's control. She had come to the full realization that she was in fact the embodiment of the powers from the well, which meant that someone like Darkon could never take control over her. She empowered him greatly, and she used all that power to vanquish the undead sorcerer. Coriolstras offered Envina to hide her away again, but Envina didn't want to. She knew who she was now, and she knew that her place was with the elves. Lorfmar and his troops, they promised to protect and guard Envina, while Sylvanas promised to keep her a secret. Caligos had also fallen in love with Envina, and he decided to stay at her side. This ends the Sunwell trilogy, but it doesn't end the story of Envina. They've never given full details about what happened next, but we can try to fill in the blanks. When the Sunwell was destroyed and Arthas killed all their people, the remaining High Elves started to call themselves Blood Elves, and Kilfa's Sunstrider joined Illidan in search for a cure for their addiction to magic. Eventually Illidan, he would go mad, and Kilfa switched allegiance to Kill Jaden. Kill Jaden wanted to come into Azeroth, and to do this they would need a powerful portal which required a huge source of power. What better source of power than the former powers of the Sunwell, so Kilfa captured Envina and took her to the Sunwell Plateau. The Sunwell's essence endured, kept hidden by those who sought to protect it. Now. I have returned with the knowledge that sacrifices must be made before we can reclaim our birthright. I have forged a new alliance. Soon, the blessed rays of the Sunwell will shine once again and usher into this world the one who will deliver us all. Kaelic went after her, of course, and he tried to save her, but somewhere along the way, he was corrupted by a dreadlord called Safrovar the Corrupter. Ah! Help me before I lose my mind! This is why you have to fight him during the Sunwell Plateau raid, and during this encounter, you cleanse Kaelic from his corruption. At the end of the raid, we find a chamber where they're holding Anvina. By this time, she is so brainwashed that she doesn't even recognize Kaelic. Anvina, you must awaken. This world needs you. I serve only the master now. Throughout the encounter, he tries to reach Envina, remind her of their love, and he tries to snap Envina out of the magical spell. You must let go. You must become what you were always meant to be. The time is now, Envina. But I'm... lost. I cannot find my way back. He manages to finally reach her at the end of the fight, and at that moment, Envina, she turns all the power of the Sunwell, all her powers, against Kil'jaeden himself. This weakens him and allows us to push him back down his portal. Envina, I love you. Focus on my voice. Come back for me now. Only you can cleanse the Sunwell. Kalik? Kalik? 
Yes, Anvina! Let fate embrace you now! The nightmare is over! The spell is broken! Goodbye, Kalik, my love! <sighs> the powers of the sun will turn against me! What have you done? What have you done? Strike now, heroes! While he is weakened, vanquish the deceiver! Goodbye, Anvina, my love. Few will remember your name, yet this day you changed the course of destiny. What was once corrupt is now pure. Heroes, do not let her sacrifice be in vain. Velen shows up after the fight, and he combines the core of Muru with the remaining powers of the Sunwell. This action restores the Sunwell to its former glory, and it gives the Blood Elves a chance at a future without a magic addiction. This finally seems to be the end of Envina and Kalik's love story, but she wasn't entirely gone. She placed a small portion of her powers within Kalik's heart, which was used during the novel Night of the Dragon. In that story, Caligos and Coriolstras they team up to stop the Black Dragon Sinestra. With the power of the Demon Soul, Sinestra nearly kills both of them, but Envina's magic plays within Kalik, it heals them and gives them a chance to stop her once and for all. As you might have noticed in this video, Envina Teague's story has a couple of gaps and unexplained elements. We're missing the entire story between the end of the comics and her showing up within the Sunwell. You also have to wonder how someone like Kilfas found out about Envina and how he was able to capture her when she knew what she was and how powerful she was. If she was able to obliterate Darkon, then how was Kilfas able to capture her, manipulate her, brainwash her, use her to summon Kill Jaden? It's also a question as to how Darkon shows up in World of War Warcraft again because apparently burning him doesn't kill him, shooting him doesn't kill him, blowing him up with the power of the Sunwell doesn't kill him because he's still an NPC of a quest in World of Warcraft. Despite all that, this is Envina's story and if you want to know more details you could always look up the Sunwell Trilogy comics. They're written by Richard A. Neck and hopefully you'll enjoy them more than I did. Which brings us to the end of my video. I hope you all enjoyed the story. Subscribe if you like my videos and until next time guys, see ya!